Hello everyone! I hope your 2021 is going pretty well. I know mine is. It's been pretty wild in the best way possible. Um, I've been fasting. I know the Bible says like not to talk about like fasting or like don't show it in your face because what you do in secret, the Lord will reward you in public. But I think this is a pretty good segue for what I'm going to be talking about today. So in most churches or Christian communities, we start the year with a 21 uh, days of fasting and prayer. It's a representation about trusting God and dying to ourselves and dying to our desires and that when we surrender it to God, we know that he'll come through, that he'll work out the rest. While you fast, you can change your diet or you can just stop eating. Sometimes people do that. <laughs> The purpose is to abstain from consumption of things that you enjoy. And in most cases, it ends up being food. But in today's age, I think you can honestly fast from anything. There's so much going on at the same time. We can find something that we can restrain from for a couple days to find God. Cause like, you're not gonna fast and then like not do anything. You replace that time with building that relationship with God. So we start in the beginning of the first month of every year to have the rest of the year mind to start on a right spiritual foot and focus on and with God. Now I want God, uh, <laughs> I want God to lead my 2021 and in certain areas that I know have been extremely sacrificial for me. Anywho, let me tell you a little bit more about this fast. Never have I ever been so tempted in my entire life with anything. And I've heard people say like, oh, I can stop eating. Oh, I can stop doing this. I can stop doing that. Okay, that's fine. But when you start praying and you have expectancy of change in mind when you're doing this, like you have to persevere, you have to be like super strict. Things will come up when you're fasting intentionally. Like spiritually fasting, things will come up. I don't even like fried foods like that and I've never wanted more arepas, alcapurrias, relleno de papas more than I've wanted in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> oh God, I know you're good. <laughs> I know you're greater than this. <sighs> shake it off, 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 shake it off. Anyway, my point of all of this is that God created all these things in our life to enjoy it. Created things can be gifts from God, whether we're fasting from them or not. All of the sweets and all of the donuts. <laughs> the things that we eat or the things that we have or the lives that we live, the choices in style and fashion and music and movies, it makes life beautiful, it's great. However, all of that still cannot deliver everything that we need. And if we begin to think that the gifts themselves can fill us up and complete our lives, we invite grief and disappointment, no doubt. We're meant to focus our lives not on the gifts, but the giver. And don't get distracted on created things, but direct your focus on the creator. And no man distractions. How easy is it for you or me to fall into a distraction nowadays? Have you gone at least a whole day without looking at your phone or hearing a bing somewhere or feeling the vibration on your wrist? This is a double-edged sword, guys. Technology is a double-edged sword. I don't wanna be that person, but like, you know it's true. Let's dive a little deeper about a story I found in the Bible about distractions. There's a story of two sisters named Mary and Martha. Jesus happens to be in town. He's passing by on his way to Jerusalem with his disciples, a town called Bethany. And Mary and Martha happen to see them come by and they're like, hey, we should invite them over. I'm assuming Jesus already had a rep in the city, so they're just trying to take advantage. Jesus is probably famous at this point. So they're like, let's invite him in. And as the gentleman that Jesus is, he accepts the invitation. So they're all inside the house and Mary ends up having the greatest, best, amazing conversations that you could possibly think of with Jesus. She's sitting by his feet. He's probably giving her all these awesome teachings, his experience. I would probably ask him a zillion questions. You've got Mary that's hanging out with Jesus and then you have the other sister, Martha. She's running all over the place trying to cook dinner. She's trying to clean and she's doing all these things all at once. Eventually, she puts her sister on blast and she says, Mary, what is you doing? How is it fair that my sister just sits here while I do all of the work? Jesus, can you tell homegirl to get up and come help me. Jesus hears her out, but basically slays her and praises Mary for what she was doing. And he goes, hey girl, I see you. I see you doing your thing, but there's only one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary got it. And that will not be taken away from her. Okay, so the problem is not that Martha is serving, like that's fine. She was probably used to it, working on hospitality, serving others, but she's distracted and she's worried. And that didn't leave any room for the most important aspect of great hospitality. That's attending your guest. 
No greater hospitality than listening to your guests and being present for them and just being there with them. And then their guest happens to be Jesus for that matter, alive, like in the flesh. Like you can just do this to Jesus. Like That's awesome. He just happened to cruise on into their house. Distractions. And I'm not throwing shade at Martha's intentions for being a good host, like the intentions were there. But like us, we can probably be putting other things ahead of being in Jesus' presence. We might have to provide for our families. We might be trying to get the best opportunities for those who are most important to us. Or just trying to take advantage that we're young or that we're single or that we don't have great responsibilities for anyone else or anything else. But if all of our activities leave us no time to be still in his presence, we're more likely to end up anxious and worried and concerned and eventually burnt out. Mary is valued not by what she does or how well she does it, but for who she is, who she simply is, and that is a child of God. Sit and rest in his presence. Hear his words of grace and of truth. Find it in his word. Find him by reading the word. There is only one thing worth being concerned about, and that's our attention to our guest. And as it turns out, our guest that we've invited in is also our host who gives us gifts and gifts in abundance. That's amazing. Like that back and forth there, it's beautiful. So I encourage you be in the stillness of the Lord. Seek his presence and grow in relationship and see how it changes everything around you. Don't let distractions, whether they're priorities of life or not, keep you from your purpose and what God wants to do through you. Whew. Uh, remember this little book? There's something that I would love to read from here. Under um, anxiety, it's one of the topics on here. This was a good book. John 14 verse 1, don't let your hearts be troubled, trust in God, and trust also in me. 1 Peter 5 verse 7, give all your worries to him because he cares about you. Isaiah 26 verse 3, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And here's a prayer that comes along with those Bible verses. Lord, you know my heart and my every thought. You know when I sit and when I stand. You know my history and my future. There are no mysteries in you. When doubts and fears threaten to overwhelm my mind and body, be the peace that calms the storm. I will remember who you are, defender, savior, the good shepherd. You are my hope. I will trust in you, even when it takes everything inside of me to choose it. I will remember that though I cannot see the way out, you see it all so clearly and you are never overwhelmed. I trust you, God. Thank you. Oh, so I don't even know how the fasting was honestly a segue through, but like I've been working on not getting distracted and really taking the time to see God's presence. And you really, really see the difference. Like I am a living, walking testimony and my story's not done. Like I know I'm gonna be an open book with you guys, but just not yet. But as of right now, I see that God is working. God can work with you. Just give him the time of day. That's all he's asking because he's walking around the city. He's around. You just gotta open up that door and invite him in. So good. Keep liking, keep subscribing. Thank you so much for always coming back and I'll see you on the next one. Hope all is well.